Hey hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I am bringing you guys this video on my interpretation of a ATIM Mini Pro box. Um, there are many people who built mini boxes on the internet out there, but this is my interpretation of such box. Um, and it has pretty much everything that I want inside of it. Um, as you can see, this is it closed up. Um, I'm actually recording through the ATEM right now, so that's kind of one of the cool features of it. I can have it all buttoned up and closed, and I can theor theoretically record and stuff, assuming my camera sources are. Um, off source and also use some software like the one that I'm using here on this tablet to control the camera sources and everything uh, but ultimately this is the box so let me give you guys a quick tour of the outer shell of the box um, and I'm gonna try to do this without showing too much of my super messy room uh, let me move this here all right so I'll try to keep this uh, not super shaky for you guys but here's the front of the box and on the front of the box we have two little switches um, this one's for the ATEM and this one's for the monitor, uh, or actually, sorry, I think I got it backwards. This one's for monitor, this one's for the ATEM. So I can power on the ATEM and the monitor separately. On the side of the box, we have pretty much nothing, just a little handle. And on the back of the box is the last thing we'll take a look at. Um, back here, um, we have a plate that kind of has the connections that you can use that I kind of source on the, on the outside. But this is for um, three different HDMI sources, so I can do one, two, three. HDMI sources. Um, this top one doubles for something else. So I have like an HDMI switcher on the inside so I can switch between two different sources, which is a input source here or something else that I have on the inside of here. Uh, this is for a, another audio um, headphone jack. And this one's for a headphone jack as well. Currently using this one, but this is the other one. And this is for uh, ethernet, for internet. There is a router inside of here, inside of the box. And uh, I'll actually go ahead and open up the box and show you guys all the information once I get on the inside. But that's kind of the general idea of the build. So let me switch back over to my other camera. And let's open this one up. So we can get looking on the inside. So I gotta be a little bit careful because it's kinda <laughs> didn't close the way I wanted it to. But there we go. This is the inside of the box. Yes, a bunch of random wires and cables. <laughs> um, so no worries, uh, we, will, we will talk about everything. Uh, so this video might take a little bit, but let me switch back to my other camera really fast so I can show you guys this once again without showing you too much of my super dirty room. Um, so here on the lid, uh, we have a nice little 10 inch monitor. Uh, that monitor is pretty nice because, I mean, it's, not, it's not a touchscreen monitor, but still pretty nice because I can see everything. As you can see, I can see all my sources pretty clearly. Um, down here I have a little router, a little small router. I have a few of these in my, uh, build because I like to do a lot of uh, small projects and stuff. It's good for labs. And then over there I have a USB hub and that USB hub I actually use for the Raspberry Pi that's inside of here. And of course uh, there's a HDMI switcher that connects to the outer um, port and something else. I'll talk about more of that in the overview. And then last but not least we have a magic arm, little uh, uh, moving arm that you can uh, move around for the monitor. And it's connected to a cheese plate. I don't remember the exact size of the cheese plate, but the cheese plate screwed in pretty perfectly into that area. So I put it there and I uh, threw a monitor arm on there. So I can theoretically articulate that arm, but kind of not really because uh, the monitor itself is pretty heavy. So let's go ahead and switch back over to the overview camera and let's look at everything else. So as, as I said, this kind of has everything inside of it. Uh, it kind of keeps everything nice and buttoned up. Um, this is the ATEM itself. And I'm going to try to do this without interrupting my recording, uh, as I did before. But the ATEM itself is actually connected to, um, uh, sorry, connecting to all of its wiring here. And it's, I, I set it up this way because I wanted to make sure that I had the ability, well, sorry, I wanted to make sure that I had the ability to kind of move my ATEM around and be a little bit flexible. Like I said, I have it connected to this, which is recording, and this can get a little hot, so let me kind of get this all together without messing with it too much. And let's move the ATEM out of the way so I can show you guys the rest of the box. So if I remove this, which is just a little piece of um, poster board, I mean, I just kind of cut it. You can see this little sloppy scrap piece of poster board I had. Um, so inside of this box, we have a jumble of cables. And I'm going to try to do all this from the overview camera instead of using the uh, shaky other camera, so that way you guys can have a nice viewing experience. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. 
uh, and we'll start talking about some of these components. So, um, there is a mess of cables down here, so please bear with me. Um, and like I said, I'm also recording on this and demonstrating with it, so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit uh, messy as well. So this is the main cord that kind of connects everything to the ATEM. Um, in here, you have an Ethernet cable that connects to a switch that's right here. So this is a little five port switch. I, I wanted to just have a router connect everything inside of it, but the issue I ran into is I didn't want to put a giant router inside of here. Um, so I, I had to go with the small, small size router that I have up here. Um, and I just, you know, it's a little bit of a pain, but I connected it uh, directly to the router. So I have more ports so I can actually connect my things because uh, this little router that's up here only has three ports. That's one for the internet and then two for devices. So uh, one of those is connecting here and then another one's connecting to something else. So ultimately, um, this is a switch that has all the uh, networking and also it gives you three extra ports so you can plug in your own laptop and maybe another device so you can connect to the same network and control your devices. Um, attached to here is just a little keyboard. Uh, this keyboard is just a little small, small little keyboard that I used to, uh, to connect to the Raspberry Pi that's connected in here. And speaking of the Raspberry Pi, it is buried under here, under all these things, and it is right there. So this is the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's really cool because the Raspberry Pi is a relatively non-fussy type of device. Um, it, it doesn't really like it too much if you keep cutting off power and cutting on power, but it's functional. It's, it's serviceable, right? So I kind of just put it down here. It has the base connections that it needs. Um, it has the, um, the monitor. It has the power. And uh, it also has this internet down here. And it's also connected to the USB hub that was up here that I pointed, to, pointed out earlier. And it also has the little um, key thing that it needs, so it can connect to the keyboard that I have here. And the reason why I had the Raspberry Pi in here is because I had the Pi HyperDeck. So the Pi HyperDeck is really cool because it allows me to do some HyperDeck things without buying a HyperDeck. Um, theoretically, you could replace the Pi with a HyperDeck. There's probably enough space in there to fit a HyperDeck. But as you can see, things are a little bit um, <laughs> all over the place relative to how I had to orient things. So moving on from the Raspberry Pi, there's two fans. This fan technically doesn't really do all that much. doesn't really get much airflow. It's just kind of there. I could take this out, but I decided to keep it there since I already drilled the holes. Um, but this is a nice 120-millimeter um, fan. And across from it is the actual fan is probably doing the most work, which is the one that you saw the grill on the outside for. Um, this one's just kind of giving a nice little breeze. And theoretically, I could drill some holes on the front, on the front here uh, so I can get some more airflow. But I decided against it because I kind of like the look of not having holes, too many holes in the front, just the little switches, uh, which the switches are right here. As you see, the wiring is relatively simple, straightforward. They're both connecting to the same power source, and that power source, uh, like I said, one controls the ATM, one controls the monitor. I don't remember which one, so um, for the purposes of preserving the video, I'm not going to test it out right now because I don't want to accidentally kill off the ATM. And then moving on, the last thing down here, and this is a part where, you know, you can make arguments where maybe this is unnecessary, maybe you need it, maybe you don't need it, um, but this last part that's down here is actually the, sorry, let me turn my volume down. There we go. Um, this last part that's down here is actually a um, Chromecast. So I have a Chromecast connected as one of my sources, and it is buried under all this stuff. So let me see if I can get this out of the way without cutting anything off. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And as you see, cable management is a nightmare. I could theoretically cut all these cables short uh, or get, you know, more appropriate cables, but I decided against it. But the Chromecast is right here. So it's uh, the little gray thing that's right there, little gray puck down here. And that Chromecast is for the purposes of, because um, with my streams and videos that I want to do, I want to do some live board game playing. Um, the Chromecast is so I can, like, cast things from my uh, phone to the to a source inside of the ATEM. And I can actually switch to the Chromecast source right now. Um, so this is what the Chromecast is currently showing. As you can see, I'm recording this video at 11.28. Um, but the cool thing about it is that, like I said, I can I can throw my screen up there and I can Chromecast my, uh, my screen. And you can see some information going on there. I'm not actually going to cast anything right now. So let's switch it back over to my camera. And in the overview camera, as you can see, we have the power strip 
the star of the party. Definitely the thing that takes up the most room inside of this box. Um, like I said, if you don't need some of these things, you can definitely um, choose to not include uh, the things like the Chromecast. Because the Chromecast technically needs two different plugs. Like, I need to plug in this, and I also need to plug in the Chromecast. Luckily, this model, the Chromecast that I have in here, can be powered with the USB. So I actually have a USB hub that's kind of tucked away in the corner here. And this is just for purely for powering devices. Um, but that USB hub is connected to this. So this power source, this giant power brick is down here. You know, so, so it's, it kind of became a Tetris nightmare to the point to where I had to get these um, special little angled um, flat, flat plugs, extension cords, that, to allow me to get the ATEM plug, which is pretty huge, out of the way. And also to allow me to get another one of the plugs out of the way. Um, theoretically, I could get the same thing for all the plugs, but I, I don't want to make it too messy because there'll be more cables down here and it'll be too much cable management. But all in all, uh, it's working out the way it should. And so um, inside of this hub, we have the Chromecast is being powered by this hub. Um, the router, the router that I have up here is being powered by the hub. And also the fans are being powered by the hub. So the fan that's here and the fan that's over here or uh, just off frame. There we go, up here. So those are all being powered by the hub. Um, I could theoretically get the switch to be powered by the hub. Um, it will require me to splice some wires and it's, it's not that big of a deal. I could totally do it. Uh, it's just, I don't, you know, I, just, I just <laughs> haven't gotten around to it. I'll just put it that way. Also, I can theoretically get this. So with the Chromecast, uh, and this is just a word for the wise, with a Chromecast, if you want to cast it inside of your ATEM, you have to use some kind of splitter or some kind of HDMI uh, stripper or H I H I is H D I or H I D. So you, you basically have to use a special type of connector to get the Chromecast to display in the ATEM because the Chromecast is designed to not plug into devices that record and the ATEM can record. So um, that was kind of one of the big, uh, big unfortunate discoveries that led to another power brick being inside of this whole entire box. Um, but if you didn't want the Chromecast, you could literally, literally just leave it open and all the connections are really just kind of here. Uh, let me switch over to my other camera so we can get a good view on that. Let me just put this right here. And there we go. So the Chromecast and everything is kind of outsourcing through here. Um, I did mention before that I had a, there we go, it's a nice little view. Uh, this is all connected to a, a Keystone connector. And in that Keystone connector, if I can ever get this to focus, uh, I think it's focusing on this cable here. Uh, okay, that's fine. It's good enough. <laughs> um, but uh, it's all connecting in through there with the audio, the um, Ethernet, as well as the HDMIs that are coming in. So let me switch my camera back. Get this out of the way. Um, so that's what that's connected to. And oh, right. Um, I should also mention the power. So the power strip is actually coming through a hole here. And this hole has like a little grommet that's on it. Uh, which took me a little bit to find, but I would highly recommend. Let me just tilt this. You can see right there. Uh, it's all coming out. So the it kind of sucks because the cord can't really be stored inside of the box. I, I did want to originally try to have the cord stored inside of the box, but as you can see, it's pretty crowded in here as it is with all the components I have crammed in there. Um, you know, like I said, if if I cut some wires and you know splice some things and made the wires shorter, I could probably fit a lot more uh, things in here. But I, I feel like this is a good amount of stuff inside of this box. And also just to just to uh, round things out. So the Raspberry Pi that I have, I'll switch over to it, that I use as a HyperDeck. Um, I can use it as a HyperDeck uh, to basically play videos. This is a little, little video of my uh, guinea pigs that, that I uh, guardianed over for a little bit. And if I connect to, which I think it is me adjust this um, but essentially what I can do is I can play videos and I can switch videos and let me uh, so so uh, while we're staring at these guinea pigs do nothing right now um, the main draw to having the Raspberry Pi is that I also kind of have a computer and um, the drawback to having the Chromecast connected to this is that the Chromecast needs to have the internet connected to it before it functions. Uh, it's just how it is. So I was thinking about 
maybe also using the Raspberry Pi for a few other utility things. So I could theoretically uh, find out what address that the Chromecast needs to uh, reach out to, get the Raspberry Pi to kind of act as a DNS server for it, and then have the Raspberry Pi just feed that particular address it is calling for uh, to check to see if there's internet. And if I can do that, I can run this whole entire thing without having the internet connected, which would be pretty, pretty nice. That'd be pretty nice. So going into the video, um, I have the um, I have everything connected in such a way to where let's turn on the sound. I have everything kind of connected in such a way to where the actual video uh, will play because, like I said, it's the Raspberry Pi HyperDeck. It's the um, the Playout B. Um, I'll, I'll put that link in the description so you guys can check that out too. But essentially, it allows me to use the Raspberry Pi as a HyperDeck. Um, so I can play other videos. This is the guinea pigs running around in a messy room. <laughs> They're in their cage, but the room itself around it, as you can see, is all the stuff everywhere. Um, but I can also, like, you know, switch between videos and have 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 kind of have kind of like fun just playing with everything. You know, just kind of enjoy using um, all the stuff and not break the bank because the Raspberry Pi uh, is pretty cheap. It's pretty versatile, and the ATM itself is pretty expensive relative to my budget, which was, you know, maybe like like a little bit under a thousand dollars. But by the time I kind of had all the parts put into it, um, it ended up being a little bit more than that. So I mean, that's that's kind of like one of the cool benefits of the Raspberry Pi. Oh, also, also um, with the Raspberry Pi, you know, besides looking at guinea pigs eat some kale, uh, if I turn this on and. Okay, there we go. We're, we're in. So I can also switch it over to the desktop. And from here, I can, you know, just use it like a Raspberry Pi. So I mean, I can go on the internet. I can uh, load some programs. I can play a game. I can do whatever I want to from here. Uh, this kind of gives me the extra level of utility with the entire device. And there's so many different things that you can do with Raspberry Pis to kind of help with your production, with your making videos. I can get it to do animations. I can get it to do, uh, like, it's, like you already saw, the HyperDeck. I can also use the Raspberry Pi as a server to get another service that I don't use. I forget the name of it. I'll put it in the description below just in case you're interested in it. But it also allows you to do, or that particular software that I cannot think of the name of, um, allows you to essentially use your uh, use a Stream Deck with your Raspberry Pi. And you can connect it to your Raspberry Pi, use a Stream Deck to control your A10 Mini Pro, um, it's just one thing I'm not really interested in investing in because I don't want to buy a Stream Deck. Uh, but if you do have a Stream Deck and you do use it, you can use a Raspberry Pi to do that. So that's kind of another reason why I want to have a Raspberry Pi down here. Um, plug into all this. So that's basically it. I mean, outside of showing you guys the fact that there's a switch, HDMI switcher here, uh, which we talked about before, which if I tilt this, you can see right there. Outside of talking about this, which is essentially allows me to change the HDMI source from the Chromecast to the uh, HDMI port that's out here. Um, there's not really much else to talk about. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's pretty much a box that has everything inside of it. Um, if I had to build this again, I would probably focus a little bit more on organizing the components. I would also um, try to maybe cut things a little bit more specifically. Um, I really don't want to cut these power cords. I know I can, um, and I probably should if I want to keep this permanent. And I know this is pretty much going to live all live inside of this box anyway. But I also want to make sure that, you know, I can still use uh, my stuff. And, you know, what, what if I don't like it? What if I need this longer? What if I need this shorter? There's like a whole bunch of what if questions. And another one of the drawbacks with this too is that with my current setup, the way I have it currently configured, um, I need to connect through a external audio device. So I need to connect through my, here's my Zoom H2N. And that Zoom H2N has my mic that's connected to it. And so it has my mic that's connected to it up here. And then also has this going out uh, to the back uh, to get into the cable here, which goes into the actual ATEM itself. So, you know, this is kind of this big old roundabout situation to get audio. Um, that's assuming that I want to record audio from an external mic using the mic inputs that are available. So that's, that's kind of the struggle that I have uh, regarding, regarding that particular aspect. Oops, sorry regarding that particular aspect of things. Um, but all in all, I mean, it's a pretty compact box. As you saw at the start of the recording of this video, um, it was all closed up and buttoned up. 
Um, from here, it's just kind of exposed, showing all the parts. So let's go ahead and close it up. And we'll close it out. So let me just put this back here. Yep, yep. Not the prettiest thing in the world. But hey, it's still pretty cool because, like I said, I can take the ATEM and I can move it around. I uh, have a little bit of flexibility with that. And yeah, I have like a little shelf. I can put the ATEM on and do my production work, uh, whatever production work that might be, <laughs> which for me is just recording board game gameplay. So definitely subscribe if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the entire video. So uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'll be able, I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any questions you guys might have, especially if it's about parts. Um, in total, if I were to price out this build from what I remember, not counting the ATEM, I think this is about maybe $300 worth of parts, uh, which is definitely not cheap. Um, but the most expensive thing was the monitor. So I think it's a $100 monitor. And the other expensive thing was the Raspberry Pi. Um, which was the the other half of the budget. Everything else is kind of parts and pieces. I mean, theoretically, maybe more like 350 price price-wise, uh, for considering the specific parts that I got, um, especially when you consider the router and the switch uh, that are involved. The switch is only $15, but the router, it's like, you know, a little $30, $35 device. So, so yeah, so, I mean, you can cut corners, like I said. If you don't want to have a Raspberry Pi, don't include it. That cuts down on the price. If you don't want to have networking, just take out the router and the switch. That, that cuts down on the price. Uh, if you also don't want to have the fan, I mean, that really cuts down on the price. The USB hub, you don't really need that. So you could really, really slim this down uh, to a very, very, very bare bones, uh, bare necessities type device. But for me, like I said, I wanted to have all these features. I wanted to make sure I had a, uh, a network that I could carry around with me. So this is the router is connected to, or everything's connected to this router, which this router is wirelessly connecting to my Wi-Fi at home to allow me to actually connect to the internet. So, so you know, I have all these I have all these bells and whistles that you don't really need inside this box uh, in hindsight. Um, <laughs> but because I could put it all in there, I did. So that's how you end up with this particular price range of box. Um, like I said, if I had to build it again, the one main thing I'll do is I'll try to find a way to incorporate like a sound control device, like a mixer, excuse me, like a mixer inside. And then also, if you don't have any need for the whole internet network connectivity or even the Raspberry Pi, you can literally just, you know, put a, put a nice little mixer right there, maybe put a mixer down there or put a mixer here, which would be a great spot for it. So you can actually reach it and, you know, monitor your uh, audio. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I'm not, not going to belabor it on too much longer. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you guys whenever.